Hi, my name is Nunadira Binti Razmi. Uh, what I learned from this course uh, is how to interpret academic data, especially from graph and statistics. Instead of see the changes, we also can know how and why the uh, changes happen, such as trade and employment and those. Thank you. That's all for me. My name is Hamisha Zumizani, and I like this course because uh, I learned the changes of economic development in major throughout the years starting from pre, uh, pre-independence pre day until now. Hi, I'm Hani. So what I'm going to say today is I love that the way Dr. Shikri teach us about history of Malaysian economy, where there are all the economic changes and improvement every year by using various analysis. Apart from that, I also can uh, find out how many our government survived during this pandemic, even our country getting worse on many sectors, especially uh, that contribute on national income. So that's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum, Tachau and Vanakam. I'm Siti Nurakma Binti Azizan. I like this course because Dr. Shukri show how to present and teach how to present data and graphs that make audience easily get what are we describe. And I gain so much knowledge about how Malaysia improved and sustain their economy by doing analysis and tracking their balance of payments in every quarter of economic sectors progressions every year. In addition, there are a lot of things that have been discussed uh, uh, like agriculture sector, change in population, manufacturers goods and etc. That's all. Hi, I am Fadli. So what I have learned and loved the most about this course is the history of Malaysian economy. Also the changes that brought by the government uh, since the pre-independence until now in developing the country's economic sector. That's all. Greetings, my name is Dini Sanan Laki Arun Muni Selman, Matrix number A1823255. I like this course because of how much I've learned about economic, social <clears throat> and politics about the country. I've learned a lot about trans- transformation about the country and I also have learned about how to get accurate statistics about <coughs> in the country's economics. Thank you. Hi, I'm Shazona. I like this course because of in this course, I am only not learn about the economic policy. I also learn about the economic history before and after independence. So it's interesting to learn about it. I'm Nur and Sabina binti Ahmarizan. I like this course because I get to know about Dosum, which is the Department of Statistics Malaysia. And I learn how to use the data in Dawson. COVID-19 is a pandemic known as novel coronavirus 2019. Uh, it is caused by severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 or SARS-CoV-2. So the virus outbreak was first identified in Wuhan, Hubei, China in December 2019. Meanwhile, in Malaysia, the first case of COVID-19 was detected on 25th January 2020 among tourists uh, from China. So this is the chronology of COVID-19 in Malaysia. On 24th January 2020, the Ministry of Health informed that 8 close contacts to the first COVID-19 case in Singapore were in Johor Bahru and they have been quarantined. On the next day, 25th January 2020, the Minister of Health at that time, which is Datuk Seri Dr. Zulkifli Ahmad, confirmed the first COVID-19 case in Malaysia involving three of eight Chinese nationals who entered Malaysia via Johor Bahru from Singapore on 23 January 2020. They were treated at Sungai Buloh Hospital, Selangor. Next, the Ministry of Health quickly devised standard guidelines for the management of COVID-19 and 34 hospitals and screening centres were specifically designated in each state of Malaysia. Also, the Ministry of Health advised to the Malaysian to not travel to China if there is no need. At first, on January 25, 2020, Malaysia showed no intention in banning travellers from China, but as the cases increased from 99 on March 8 to 200, with the first two deaths, government started to take action. One of the strategies is to put thermal scanners for locals or tourists returning from abroad. Malaysians who returned from Wuhan also were quarantined. 
Next, they increased the number of hospitals that will be used to treat COVID-19 patients. Uh, government also implemented MCO on 18 March 2020. Ministry of Health also set up funds for patients who are affected due to quarantine and expenses used to treat them. Last but not least, government set up provisional hospital in, in MAPS for COVID-19 patients. These are the actions taken by others to encourage people to stay at home and help those who are in need. This situation also gives opportunity to Malaysian researchers. For the numbers and details of COVID-19, I will exp I will give out two statistics. The first one is the cumulative cases of positive cases. Number two, the monthly positive cases of COVID-19. For the first statistics, let's look in the year to 2020 and the cumulative case in the first month of January 2020, we have 8. For February, we have 29. For March, we have 2,766. For April of 2020, we have 6,002. For May, 7,819. For June, 8,639. For July, 8,976. For August, 9,340. For September, 11,224. For October of 2020, 31,548. For no November of 2020, 65,697. For the month of December of the year of 2020, 113,010. We start off the year 2021 with the cumulative case of COVID-19 with 214,959. For February, we have 300,752. For March, we have 345,500. For April, 408,713. For the month of May, we have 572,357. For June, 751,979. For July, 1,113,272. For August, 1,746,254. For September, as of 25th September, 2,185,131. The first month of 2020, we have 8 cases only. For February, we have 21. For March, we have 2,737. For April, we have 3,236. With May, with a slight decline, with a total of 1,817. June, 820. July, another decline, which is 337. August, we have a slight increase, which is 364. On September, we have 1,884 positive cases. For October, we have 20,234, which is a very big increase from the month of September. In the month of November, we have 34,149 positive cases. And last but not least, for the month of December, we have 47,313 positive cases. For the month of January 2021, the total cases is 101,949. For the month of February, we experienced a slight decrease that brings the total case is to 85,793. For the month of March, the number of cases decreased almost by half. Uh, that brings the total number of cases to 44,478. For the month of April, the number of cases is 63,213. For the month of May, the number of cases in, increased exponentially. For the, that brings the total number of cases to 163,644. For the month of June, the number of cases is 179,622. And for the month of July, 361,293. For the month of August, the case almost doubled. 
that brings the total case to 632,982. And for September, we have experienced a slight decline in total number of cases that uh, as of 25th September, that brings the total case to 438,877 only. The measures taken by the government on the first PKP is firstly, all the business premises must be closed except for those who provide basic necessities. And second, all the religious activities are not allowed to be held. Third, Malaysians are not uh, allowed to live in the country or restrict and restriction to all the travels to came into the Malaysia and and for uh, all the Malaysia that uh, come back from the overseas must be quarantined and self check up before they uh, meet other people. All school and university educational institution will be closed, and public and government premises also will be closed. Next, what's actually happened during the COVID-19? Actually, there's a lot of situation that actually happened. We can see a lot of activities and business adversely expected due to COVID-19. But I'm going to start with mentioning about petroleum sectors. The oil prices fell by 30%. This is because lack of demand for fuel. We know that transportation, tourism and aviation are affected as a result of COVID-19, which reduce outdoor activities. The next activities and businesses that adversely affected we will see is construction. During the restriction period for movement, full movement of the first phase, all construction site ordered closed except those listed as a critical service. Operating hours and workers allowed is as usual, but on limited attendance capacity only. This is because the business company, community supports the government's decision to implement the first phase of a 14 days full closure of the economic and social factor that started in June 1. There were 2.8 million micro entrepreneurs and the informal sector affected by the reduction in income. In income. Transport and storage subsector. Public transport passenger capacity is limited to 50%. This is because the Ministry of Transport MOT has informed that all public and land transport services will operate with a passenger capacity of 50%. The reduction in passenger capacity will have an impact on safe special public service activities, especially for activities intercity rail passenger transport and urban and suburban rail passenger. So we are moving to the next sector that is tourism. Movement Control Order PKP 3.0 implemented following a sharp increase in COVID-19 cases that caused the hotel not get enough customer that caused a decline in income and be a contributing factor of layoff and hotel closures. This leads directly to my next point. As we can see, uh, travel recovery is lower than expected in 2021, where the government in this region have implemented some of the towers restriction and quarantine measures in the world. Preliminary traffic figure for March 2021 by APA show that international passenger market remain weak with an abating uh, border restrictions, particularly in Asia Pacific. This has been exacerbated by the uneven progress in vaccination rollout and rapid resurgence in COVID-19 transmission in some countries, particularly India. Now, the last types of activities that adversely affected that I am going to mention is nurseries and kindergarten, that is from service education sector. This is because they are not allowed to operate during the implementation of full movement restrictions, except operations for children of frontline workers and parents who are both working only. Hi, I'm Hani. So, what I'm going to say today is I love that the way Dr. Shikri teaches us about history of Malaysian economy, where they all the economic changes and improvement every year by using various analysis. Apart from that, I also can uh, find out how many our government survived during this pandemic, even our country getting worse on many sectors, especially uh, that contribute on national income. So that's all from me. Thank you. COVID-19 had forced a lot of factory and business to cease all their uh, operation because of preventing spread of COVID-19. But uh, this actually make people has lost uh, their jobs and at the same time uh, make people doesn't have any income for survive. From this, uh, we can see unemployment in Malaysia has been decreased, has been increased 4.8% uh, on this, in December 2020. And it's very dangerous uh, for Malaysian economic development. COVID-19 also made all the education system in Malaysia had a worse impact, especially for poor people. Why I'm saying this is start from the pandemic, our classes 
session has been changed from physical to online learning. So, uh, they need to have a device to join the classes. But if for those uh, have no enough budget, uh, it's making it difficult for them to get uh, any budget or device. Other than that, government uh, need to spend money on new learning system. During this pandemic, we also knew about food supply and production are difficult to being sustained because lack of employees. So, uh, their production being slow on processing and anything involved to fulfill the customer demand, uh, especially any necessary food that has been needed. From the demand side, as you can see, any expensive food has a low demand because of consumer do not have enough money to fulfill all they are needed. So, they are only focused on cheaper food for necessities in addition the loss of income source are uh, causing difficulties, difficulties on various aspects. So, thank you. Malaysian Economic Stimulus Package Till date, Malaysian government have announced 8 economic stimulus package to recover and overcome from the pandemic. First of all, is Prihatin Economic Stimulus Package, Prihatin PKS Plus, National Economic Recovery Plan, Kita Prihatin Economic Stimulus Package, Perlindungan Ekonomi dan Malaysian Assistant Package per Mai, Strategic Program to Empower the People and Economy per Merkasa, Additional Strategic Program to Empower the People and Economy per Merkasa Plus, National People's Well-Being and Economic Recovery Package per Mulin. All of these eight thing, eight, eight economic recovery plan has three things in common, which is empowering the citizens, which are individual and households. Second is propelling businesses, small businesses, middle businesses, stimulating economic. All of these eight economic recovery plans have these three things in common. To explain all and every eight economic stimulus package it will take time so i will explain only one of it which caught my attention the most which is permis Kasa plus this economic stimulus package focuses more to businesses and household ind and individuals for businesses there's extension of the wage subsidy program enhancement of micro loans electricity discount loan monetarium and the uh, Enca encouragement of business to go online and many more this is all so that businesses doesn't go out of business and uh, to continue their uh, transaction so that the ec Malaysian economy get to grow next will be for individual and household this is done by cash aid relief of loan repayment increasing support for healthcare assistance for Malaysian below poverty line and uh, income loss assistance. All of this will ensure that household and individual during this pandemic get to survive and and to contribute to economy after this. Since much of the world went into lockdown, it is forcing many activities to temporarily shut down. But some of the activities getting benefit, such as e-commerce. E-commerce is buying and selling of goods and services over the internet. Due to quarantine, people cannot go outside and must stay at home. Because of that, they need to sell and buy items online. Even when the quarantine ends and cases getting low, people will stick be cultures and many will still prefer to shopping online from the safety safety of their homes. Besides that, everyone become founder with mobile device since it was the only way to interact. So marketing and business procedure getting more easier to adapt with e-commerce. According to new reports, within a month after the MCO movement control order came into force in 2020, online business activity has increased by 28.9%. That's all for me. Thank you. During the COVID-19 pandemic, technology are playing an important part to keeping our society function in a time lockdown and quarantine. And technology change can help to reduce the spreading of coronavirus. Technology change in online shopping and robot delivery. Because of lockdown, we cannot go up from home. So, uh, online shopping market place platforms such as Shopee and Lazada can help us to buy something 
without we need to go out from home. Second is um, digital and payment contactless payments. Cash might be carrying the virus, so this method can help us to pay something without touching something. Third is remote work. Many of company have asked their com employee to work from home. Remote work is enabled by the technology, including the virtual meeting and work collaboration tools. Fourth is um, distance learning. Many of educational institutions starting to offer online course. Telehealth is an effective way providing essential primary care. Other technology change in online online entertainment, supply chain 4.0, uh, robotic and drone, 3D printing, and the last is 5G and ICT. 5G and ICT is a stable, affordable, and high speed internet for people. National Recovery Plan is a government initiative to develop economy. First, they have the Malaysian Digital Economy, MDAC, focus on digital transformation and leisure five. Their initiative is to boost digital uh, digital business sector and as well as developing quality tech talent in Malaysia. Second, the National Digi Digital Network Jandala. This initiative is about investment to strengthen connectivity and ten-year plan for their implementation 5G nationwide. Third is Malaysian Dev Bank Table High MDVB. It's about to assist technology company to increase business activity. And last, we have um, Pelan Pemulihan Jangka Pendek Penjana. Government give 50 ringgit Malaysia in e-wallet as an effort to encourage people to use contactless payment.